Okay, perfect. So um, thanks for being present with me here today. Um, and thank you to Freddie. And I know you guys all have a lot of things that you guys could be doing. So I just really appreciate um, the time that we get to spend together. And I know life is kind of crazy. Like Freddie was mentioning, it was raining like crazy yesterday. And while you guys are on this um, workshop, this training, you're probably going to get five to 10 like calls, texts, emails, whatever it is. Um, and for now, if you could just kind of table that stuff and just kind of be present because the next uh, two hours that we're going to spend together is just really an investment in yourself and your business. And just want to look forward to digging in with you guys. Okay. Um, and just ask you to be present. So if you can, um, like Mike and Amanda and Eddie, Naomi, um, Raphael's kind of bouncing back and forth, has their uh, videos on. If you guys could do that, it does make it a little bit more fun. Um, like Freddie said, if you're having a bad hair day, that's okay. If you're having a great hair day, um, like Eddie, um, then we want to see it. Okay. Um, so in all seriousness, team, um, we love to have fun here at Southwestern. So to kind of start things off, um, what I'd like to do is just have a little competition and see who's going to have the funniest thing. Okay. So grab your phone real quick. Okay. And go ahead and text me your name and your favorite emoji or GIF. And whoever has the funniest one wins. Okay. So go ahead and do that. This is just to have a little bit of fun. See who's got this on, on the ready the quickest. And we'll see who's got the best sense of humor this morning. Okay. And my number is right there, the 310-780-3759. Okay. And we'll see who has the funniest one. And as you guys are doing that, I'll show you some of the winners uh, from the previous uh, workshops we've done. So this one tends to be a real estate favorite if you guys are looking at this, this one closely. What and if anyone can come up with something cuter than this little I will sell the house to, oh. Yeah. Okay, so please put your names in so I know I can give credit to who sent it in. <laughs> that one's pretty good. I'm pretty sure, okay. Add your names in, add your names in because I don't know who these are coming from. Okay, I got Raphael, Eddie. Okay, Eddie, I think Eddie's in the lead right now. I'm pretty sure that's Naomi, but I'm not sure, sure. Ooh, I don't know. I think Amanda might win. You guys want to see Amanda's? I think she's the winner. Is that what Amanda looks like if she's in person? Okay, so um, now what's, what's the point in this? What's the value in this? It's really nothing other than to just have some fun, um, which is a pretty important value here at Southwestern Consulting. We believe in laughter and helping others to laugh. Um, so I just invite you to have a little bit of fun with me today because it always makes it a little bit more fun. Uh, Freddie and I have spent a lot of time putting this training together uh, for you all. And today's uh, agenda is going to be amazing. Like he said, we've done tons of these workshops, hundreds, uh, actually, I guess thousands by now virtual. And I can't wait till we get more in person again in California. Um, but I think all of you would agree with me that you probably can't get everything you need to change your life and business in just an hour or two of training, right? And that's why we have a coaching program is that's where we really change people's lives. And on average, anyone who works with us um, has an increase in their income of at least 25.1% in the first 12 months of working with us. So if our program's for you, great. You have an opportunity to sign up today. And if not, that's totally fine too. Just take as much content as you can um, and see what you can learn and apply to your business. Is that fair? Thumbs up? Okay. So 
Um, the only thing I ask is just come in with an open mind and we'll um, get started. So our goal, our mission in at Southwestern Consulting is to help elevate the practice and perception of sales. This is our passion. This is our mission. Um, not only do we want to help you sell more, but we also want to help elevate the practice and perception. We want to move away from that pushy salesperson to that service-oriented um, salesperson to help you get the, the results um, and help your clients get into the, the best home or get the best price for their home if they're selling it, whatever that may be. Now, after I do a great job with all of you today, what do you think I'm going to ask for? And this is where I'm going to ask for participation. So be ready to unmute and, and pop in here. So I'll say that again. So after I do a great job today, what do you think I'm going to ask you all for? Sign up coaching. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'll also, just like you ask everyone to put in offers on houses or um, to accept an offer, whatever it is, I'm going to ask you guys for referrals because one of the most important aspects in sales, right, is referrals, introductions and we believe at Southwestern Consulting of being practitioners first and coaches second. Okay, so I'm gonna be a practitioner. I'm just gonna do exactly what you guys are supposed to do because we're all in the same boat. We're all in sales. Sound good? Okay, so um, first thing, I just really wanted to kick off and I'm gonna ask for some participation here is just to understand and kind of reflect on some of your goals that you have, okay? So let's think about some goals and um, like, goals around real estate, maybe even a personal goal, but just think about like, what's one goal that you have that you really want to accomplish here in 2022? What's that one thing you really want to achieve? And like Freddie said, I want you guys to take some notes and I want you to actually have this goal in mind as we go through the rest of the, the training today. Okay. So who's brave enough to share what their goal is in 2022? Come on. If I could just sell one house, I'd be happy. Okay. Naomi, one house. That would be your first one, right? Yes. Okay. That's a good goal, right? Because to get to number 100, you need to have the first one. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Who else? Raphael, you brave enough? Huh? Uh, unmute yourself. I can see you talking, Raphael. Nobody can hear you, though. Mike or someone? Raphael's got to learn how to unmute himself. I'll go. <laughs> okay. Uh, to sell two commercial properties this year and to double my business from last year. And what was your business last year? What was that? You said double your business from I last year? Because I can't hear it. <laughs> oh, right me and Freddie are sharing a speaker here. Hold on. So I had, um, I think I had 14 transactions last year. So I'd at least like to do 30 this year. And then nice. two that's, a, that's an awesome goal. Okay. So whatever that goal is for you, team, okay, carry that through the rest of this training and we're going to kind of dig in. And thank you for sharing, Amanda and Neil. Okay. So but I have my goals right now. Okay. Who's that? That's me. Rafael. Oh, we can hear you now. Okay. What was your goal, Rafael? Well, right now I want to sell right now a, a home. Okay, you're in the same boat as Naomi. Yeah, and also I want to get my driver's license. Driver's license? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And then buy myself to sell real estate. Yeah, I, I can't imagine how you're trying to do this without a driver's license. You're you're a yeah. you're a hustler. Yeah, buy myself a a BMW five series. Nice, awesome. So. Team, with that goal that you just wrote down in mind, okay, what we're going to start off talking about today is controlling the controllable, okay? Because if you think about your goal for a second, do you have 100% control whether you hit that goal or not? No, right? But there are things that we have control over that will help us get there, okay? And what we actually have found working with so many people is as humans, we tend to actually spend a lot of energy, effort, time, and emotion on all the things that we can't control. Would you all agree? Like the market rates, things like that. And over the last week, 
if you think about it for a second, how much time, energy, and emotion have you actually wasted worrying about the things that you can't control? Okay, what was that thing for you? So as I go through this, we're gonna focus on the three main controllables, the building blocks of your business that are gonna help you grow. And as I go through all three pieces, think about them as in regards to that goal, okay? So the first one, this one's real simple. This one's obvious, is, is, the, is your skill set. okay? So go ahead and write that down. Your skills are your industry knowledge, generating referrals, prospecting, networking, closing, actually asking for a commitment, okay? Those are our, our um, skills that you need to be successful in, in any sales industry, but real estate as well. And these are things that you can be very intentional about growing and developing and honing in and improving to increase the likelihood of getting to that goal. Now, with that goal in mind, what's one skill that you know if you could improve on that one thing it would help you get closer to that goal. Go ahead and write that down, okay? Because that's one thing you can take away. I need to work on this in my business. So this is just the first controllable is are we always looking for new ways to improve our skills? And I would say everyone here on this training today at least is, is starting that because you guys are here. Now the trick is to implement it afterwards, okay? So take some great ideas and then make sure you put them into practice after this, okay? Next, the second one is our motivation, our drive, our why. And right now, this is probably even more important because this is going to be why um, you actually do something when fear shows up, when we step outside of our comfort zone. Um, and for those of us, and I'm pretty sure I'm speaking to the right crowd, where our income is tied to our performance, our motivation is pretty important, right? Okay. So, um, do you guys have any like favorite speakers on this topic on motivation other than Freddie and Eddie, of course? Who are some of your guys' favorite speakers on motivation? I can wait. It's more fun when we all participate. There you go. I couldn't unmute myself. Um, you know, we like listening to Mike Ferry. Um, okay. Also, um, you know, I follow a, a writer named Gary John Bishop and, um, you know, a couple other like uh, Chris Smith. He's also in real estate. Brian Casella. Okay, great. Um, one, of my favorite, one of our favorite. Go ahead. Who's that? Nope. Okay. Um, is Jim Rohn. Have you guys ever heard of Jim Rohn? Okay, perfect. So Jim Rohn, he has this saying where if you take, a, take an idiot and you motivate him, what do I have? Motivated idiot, right? but that's not really effective, okay? So the idea is we have to have not just our motivation, but we also have to have the skills and we have to be looking for new ways to develop both, okay? Because you guys have all heard the sayings, right? Your greatest potential lies outside of your comfort zone. So we have to constantly be looking ways to push ourselves to be uncomfortable when it's good for us. So for that goal you wrote down, my question for all of you is how bad do you want it? Do you want it bad enough to try new things, to get at least a little uncomfortable, if not super uncomfortable, to ask for help, to fail along the way, to make some mistakes? And if not, if your answer was no to any of those or all of those, why not? Maybe that's not really your goal. Maybe you need a bigger goal, you need a scarier goal, something that really excites you and maybe even scares you to share with other people because it's so big, okay? So that's just the second controllable. And this doesn't happen by mistake. We have to make this very, very intentional. It's kind of like showering. You have to find your motivation every day um, and you have to be motivated every single day. So what are you doing to stay motivated? So now that we've got the skill and the will, the third part is the systems, your organization. And this honestly team is one of the reasons most people get into coaching is it's all about how do I get the most fruit out of the greatest gift we have, the minutes in a day, okay? How, have you guys ever noticed um, how some people have so much on their plate, they're on boards of nonprofits, they have kids, they have hobbies, and they're athletes, yet when you're with them, they're present, right? They seem to be so calm, okay? Nothing really kind of frazzles them. Many of other people who don't have that much going on, they seem a little disorganized, they're a little bit behind, a little bit late, a little bit frazzled. Can any of you relate to this? Okay. 
How does it make you feel if you're that second person? Okay. So a lot of people get into coaching just to help them create better systems to get better use of those minutes uh, in their life. And this is a really important piece is it's not just with business. It's to find that balance sometimes between business and life. Okay. And the thing that ties all three of these together is the word that goes in the middle is that all important word habits, because without the right habits, nothing we talk about today is really going to matter. Okay, I could give you the best skills in the world. You could leave super, super motivated. And I could give you every system imaginable, right? But two weeks from now, right? If we don't allow these to become habits, we kind of fall back into what we're used to. And that's not really going to be the, the name of the game here. Okay, and if we're going to be honest for a second, okay, for those of us who have a camera on, how many of us in the last two years, because if you can't believe it or not, this whole craziness started two years ago, have developed some bad habits? in the last year, okay? And so we gotta change some of these and get back out there. Um, and that's why all three of these are gonna be so important to develop that, okay? Now, um, part of our job is to come in and help you identify what are you doing that's working and really lean into that as a strength. But this is the hard part. What are those habits that you've developed in the last couple of years? Maybe you've had them for the last 40 years, I don't know, okay? That need to change to help you get to that next level, to get a little bit more out of your life and business. And that's where we come in and we replace it with the best habits and the best practices to do that. And the way we do this is through everyone's favorite thing, accountability. How many of you guys woke up this morning just saying, I can't wait to be held accountable? Nobody? Okay. But if we're honest with, our second, with ourselves for a second team, how many of us know that if we had at least a little bit more accountability, we would definitely be closer to our goals right now? everybody, right? Okay. So it's that, that dirty little A word that we all kind of shy away from, but we know we all kind of need it, right? So it's kind of like a personal trainer, right? If you wanted to lose weight, I know we're almost, we're almost done with the first quarter. Can you believe that? Okay. But let's say I started and I haven't lost out, but if I want to lose weight, I want to get in better shape. We all know I need to work out more and I need to eat less, right? So why do people go hire personal trainers? It's the accountability piece. If I pay someone a hundred, hundred fifty dollars a session. Am I more likely to show up? Am I less likely to eat that cookie or that donut? That's a hundred percent what it is. Accountability is what allows us to show up consistently over time and turn those systems, those skills, that motivation into actual habits. And then what happens, right? We get to those results and we actually start achieving those goals we set out early. Okay. So those are the three building blocks of the habits of uh, top producers. Um, and the three things that we can really control. Um, and next, I wanted to just kind of jump into the habits of top producers and the most foundational things that allow people to be successful no matter what, okay? So these are the three most common things. Disclaimer team, none of this is gonna be rocket science, but not rock, rocket science, okay? So nothing you haven't seen before, but here's my challenge to all of you. Even if you know these things, are you actually doing? And are you doing them consistently? And if you're not, why not? What's getting in the way? Okay. And would it help if you have just a little bit more accountability? Okay. So the first habit of all top producers is they find a way, not an excuse. They don't live by excuses. We all come up with excuses from time to time, why we didn't hit our full potential, why we didn't lose that weight that we set out to. So what are some of the excuses that you've told yourself over the last two weeks, okay? Um, too many buyers, my offers won't get accepted. Everyone else is dropping their commissions. I don't know enough people. The people I don't know don't know enough people. I don't wanna come off too salesy. Does any of this sound familiar to you guys? Okay, so if you were to write down all of the thoughts you've had over the last week onto a piece of paper, what would that look like? Would that be something you'd want to share? Would it include some of the things I just said? Or would it be really inspiring to you? Would it be really motivating? So is this something that you want to change? Okay. Now, are there challenges that seem to come up every day, every week, every month, every year? Absolutely. Okay. But does that mean you can't be successful? Not at all. Okay. So what we see in top performers is they look at an opportunity in an obstacle, okay? If you guys have ever heard the book, 
the obstacle is the way, that is one of the, the um, key tie-ins here with finding a way, not an excuse, okay? And it's not that top producers don't hear or have those excuses pop up, okay? Because we all have this little guy on our left side and our right side, okay? We call him Mr. Mediocrity or Mr. M for short, okay? And it's not that top producers don't have this little guy whispering in, in their ear, just like everybody else, okay? It's that they hear him, but they're willing to knock him off their shoulder 200 times a day if they need to, because they know that's what it's going to take to be successful. Okay, so this is the first habit of top producers is they find a way, not an excuse. And this is so, so, so important um, to being successful um, in sales. And we'll skip this part. Okay. Okay, so the second habit of all top producers is they're students of the game. Okay, they invest in their, their mind. Again, getting back to Jim Rohn, one of our favorite, uh, kind of like the godfather of sales, right? A formal education will make you a living. A self-education will make you a fortune. Okay, so unmute yourselves for a second. When you hear being a student of game, what does that mean to you? Let me ask you team for a second. What, are, what, what is that thing that you could be doing or that you are doing where you're investing in your business? always learning always learning new things always refresh your stuff like that always learning how uh taking courses uh jumping on zooms you know stuff like that it, it, it helps. training like this yes okay perfect who else um christy i'm gonna call one of the mike henry yesenia karina any any of you people what do you guys do to be a student of the game Brenda, hopped on, on, on video, thank you. I'll say being humble and having a proper attitude, not thinking that you know everything. Yeah, humility is key with being a student of the game, right? Is It's not that I know everything, it's what can I do to get better? Um, the other thing is, is like when things don't go our way, it's like asking Freddie or Eddie, like, hey, this is the situation I came across, like what could I have done better here, right? It's that hum humble heart. To, to come and ask for help, okay? Um, being a student of the game is one of the most challenging things that we've uh, found in sales. It's like, what are you actually doing? What are you reading? What are you watching? And it's not just like learning the information, it's actually taking the time to implement in, it into your business, okay? It's like, after we go over everything today, was it some good stuff that you just took away and then a week later you forget it all? Or is it, I came up with a list of 10 things and I came up with a list of, and then uh, a strategy to actually implement those 10 things one by one, focus and grow simply, okay? Because if we try to focus on 10 things at once, it's pretty hard, right? Can we all focus on one thing at a time, right? And then the second and then the third, and that's how you actually become better at your craft, okay? This is one of the most important, yet the most challenging things to do in sales is to consistently be a student of the game and find great ways to implement role play, study, practice, read into your business, okay? Now, the third habit of all top producers is they take action now, okay? This is the speed of implementation, even when there's fear or hesitancy, because so many times we all have this feeling of like, ah, I know I should, but, and if you have the courage to take action in spite of that fear, um, then you're gonna be a lot more successful. And if we're gonna be honest, we all struggle with this some days, okay? So on a scale of one to 10, I want you all to rate yourself, okay? This is just for you. Um, so a 10 is someone who wakes up every day. They wake up early Monday, TGIM, so excited to start the week. They have a plan. They have their goals written out. They know what they want to accomplish. They're executing that plan all week long. They even know where they're going to be a student of the game and everything like that. That's a 10, okay? A one is someone who has great intentions. They have a pretty good idea on where they want to go, but they're kind of stuck in reactive mode. They show up, they're busy, but at the end of the day, they're kind of like, what did I get done? Um, just kind of spinning your roof. Okay, so that's a one. Okay, so where do you find yourself most days? So go ahead and write your number down. Okay, it's just for you. And if we aren't operating at a 10 most days team, what is that costing? And notice I said what and not how much, right? 
because for some of us, it is costing us a certain amount of money, right? Because I'm pretty sure everyone got into real estate to make a lot of money, okay? But for others of us, it's actually costing us a goal, a dream. Uh, and for more people, not operating at our best is actually costing us that guilt, that personal feeling of not hitting my fullest potential. I know I'm so uh, capable of so much more, okay? And that's just a terrible cycle to be in. So the trick here, team, is how do I get myself to the place where I'm in eight, nine, or 10 more often, okay? And for most people, it's just taking action on the things that need to be taken action on, okay? So unmute yourself, get ready to answer. Okay, so one thing we've actually found that's the most expensive invisible cost in business today is, is this nasty, dirty little word. It starts with a P. Any ideas? No? Procrastination? Yes, Brenda, I love it. Yes, procrastination, exactly, okay. So, and what we've actually found is there's actually a, a sneakier, um, dirtier part of this, which we call creative avoidance, okay? And right now, this is so dangerous with everything going on. There's so many distractions, emails, you know, text messages, whatever it is. This is just busy being busy, okay? So ask yourself, have you ever ended a day, felt like you were working so hard, staying so busy, and yet wondered where all the time went? And you realize all that stuff you did all day didn't really move your business forward. That's creative avoidance. Doing all the stuff that's easy or comfortable, but isn't really moving our business forward. Okay. And with this, there's actually a disease that we all suffer for. It's in me and it's in you. Okay. Which we call Lodi or the law of diminishing intent. Okay. This simply states that as time goes on, we are less likely to take action on our initial intentions. It's just human nature, right? We've all experienced this. This is when your alarm goes off and you hit snooze, it's harder to wake up later and you didn't get any extra sleep, okay? This is when your, your spouse or your partner asks you to do something and you're like, yeah, yeah, honey, I'll do it later. And then it never gets done, okay? We all fall victim to this. So the trick is, how do we overcome our procrastination tendency? How do I get past this? So one of the main things that we really help our, our clients do in coaching is dial in on the true things that drive joy, okay? Um, not just income, okay? So I know on the screen it says, how do, uh, how do we overcome this? So we focus on your income producing activities, okay? So I would say this is anything that helps you feel alive, right? Because that helps you to drive your motivation, okay? But also picking up the phone, door knocking, prospecting, reaching out to your sphere, networking, all of that. Those are all uh, income producing activities, okay? But if we don't have a plan, it's so easy to waste a day. And if we waste too many days in a row, what happens to our motivation? That will dip as well. And if we're honest for a second, what happens to our skills if we stop practicing? those go down and we end up in this terrible cycle of not really doing much and not being successful. And then all of a sudden we're not doing real estate anymore. Okay. So the way, how do we, how do we protect these things that are most important? So let me ask you guys team, what is probably your top one or two income producing activities when it comes to real estate? Prospecting. Prospecting. Okay. Anything else? So prospecting means a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, I don't know if you meant gathering referrals or calling on those people. Door calling, knocking, Raphael. Calling our center of influences. And gathering more, generating leads. Yes, generating. Right? Okay, yeah. How many of you guys love generating leads? Okay. <laughs> Most people don't, if we're going to be honest for a second, right? So what do we do? We're really good at not doing those. We're really good at finding other things to do. So what we do in coaching is we really help people dial in. And this is just an example of something else. We set a weekly schedule up to, to protect those times. So let's say reaching out to your sphere and door knocking are going to be those two most important practices that you need to protect, okay? We plan it into your week. We find the time to do it. And we figure out what's working and what's not. And we build 
like a fence. We build a moat around those activities because those are the most important things. Because if you get to the social media or you don't, you send out some cards or you don't, none of that matters if we didn't generate leads or go door knocking, right? So we really dial in with this with all of our uh, clients to really drive their business forward, even when things get busy, even when things get crazy, okay? So for you guys seeing the good news here, okay, is all of these are controllable, okay? So that means we all can be top producers, okay? So finding a way, being a student in the game, taking action now, these are all things we have 100% control over. So this means we can all be top producers. So before I switch gears and switch into a more technical piece here, um, I want you all to just kind of take a second. And this is gonna be kind of the yoga portion of, of the, the workshop, okay? So just take a deep breath. Okay, and pick one of these three that if you had to focus on just one of these three over the next, the next week, which one would it be? Write it down, okay? Pick one for yourself to focus on because we all do better focusing on one thing rather than three, okay? And which one would it be for you? I'm gonna have like one or two people share real quick. The people who don't have their cameras on can share too. We don't mind. Ready to uh, find a way? Sorry, say that again, David. I was just saying, which one of these three do you guys want to focus on? I just oh. wanted to ask one or two people to kind of jump in and participate. Let's see. Pick one. Okay. Ready to start. Annotating on it. Freddie, by what is this? <laughs> find a way. Find a way, not excuse. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Find a way, not excuse. Was that Yesenia? Or who said that? I didn't catch it. Naomi. Yes. And Yesenia. And Yesenia. Okay. Why did you guys say that? Find a way, not excuse. Because I'm always finding excuse. <laughs> yeah, we're all good at that, right? Yesenia, <laughs> what about you? Same. Um, I always um, say I'm busy. I'm doing other things. I can't do it. But we can always find a way. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, and it's, it's, it's funny, too, because when we find an excuse, like just to, to harp in on this one, because I do think it's one of the most important. When we find an excuse, it's like that cookie, right? That short term pleasure, right? But it, gives, it creates that long term pain. But when we find that, that find a way, it's short term pain, but it's that long term benefit, right? So just my encouragement to both of you, okay? So um, next, I just wanted to jump into uh, an outline of the cycle of the sale. Um, it, for any of you who have had any uh, former, formal, sales training. Um, this will probably look familiar. If you haven't, it'll be new. Um, and the whole idea with this is actually having a process to help a client come to the point of decision. And what we see, the reason this is so important and the reason we're covering it today is a lot of times we see people that will go into scenarios and conversations uh, with prospects or clients, and they're just kind of winging it. They don't really have a plan in place um, on how they're guiding this person to make a decision. Or maybe they present what they would want to do uh, to themselves, but they haven't really thought through, how am I going to get this person from point A to point B? Okay. So there's so much value in having a, a cycle that's rooted in psychology and understanding all of the human behavior. So as I go through this, there's actually seven steps of the cycle um, we're going to talk through. And some of these are going to apply to you more than others. Okay. So as I go through, take some notes and give yourself a pat on the back for the ones that you feel like you're doing a good job on, maybe put a star, okay? And maybe put a, an X or make a note on all the other areas where you're like, hmm, I could probably do a little better at that, okay? And I'm gonna just kind of go through this uh, quickly and highlight a couple uh, parts, unless there's any questions, um, then we'll dig in a little bit more there, okay? So um, the first step of the cycle of the sale is just gathering free approach. This is anything you can learn about the client before you meet them, okay? So this is doing your homework um, so you don't go into the situation more, okay? So let me ask you guys, what's like two or three things that you would want to know about someone before you reached out to them, before you even met them? Yes, 
their motivation to buy or sell. Okay, perfect. What else? Can you repeat the question, please? What's one or two things you'd want to learn about your prospect before you reach out to them? Um, I think more on the personal side, like their family. Like if they're married? Yeah, if they have family, kind of give me an idea of what they will be looking for, kids. Um, okay. Instead of going straight into like the sales mode, kind of like learn a little bit about their personal life. Yep. Not getting to detail, but yeah, like get to know them first. Perfect. Okay. Because the pre-approach, right, is going to lead into the second step, which is where we have to make our first contact with someone, right? Do you all know how long it takes to make a first impression? How long you have? Seven seconds, right? Seven seconds to make a first impression. Okay. So have you ever reached out to someone and you think, man, this is, this is the one, this is the hot lead. This is the one who's for sure going to list with me. It's going to be a slam dunk. You get on the phone with them and within 15 seconds, you're off and you're like, what happened? Right. You guys have all heard of the golden rule, right? Treat people the way you want to be treated. What we actually teach in coaching is um, the platinum rule or how to navigate the different personality types. Because if you just sell the way that you want to be sold, you're going to be missing out on at least 75% of the people out there. Okay, so what we actually teach is in this approach, kind of like what Yaseni was talking about, is how to actually engage and connect with a, a prospect, okay? Not just understand their motivation of buying or selling, okay? Because how many realtors are out there today? How many real estate agents are out there in Southern, in, in California? I think it's something like 100,000 or something like that. One too many. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what, what are you doing to engage, connect, to, um, to make that connection with them in those first seven seconds to make a great first impression, okay? And the trick or the challenge here, team, is if you make a bad first impression, it actually takes up to seven additional meetings to, to fix that. And the likelihood that you're going to get that in this environment, in this world, probably zero, okay? So after that, we move into um, step three, which is the introduction, okay? This is the question asking phase. This is getting to know the client, learning about them, going, um, we're going to cover a little bit more about this a little bit later uh, in the sales cycle. And once we learn a ton about them, we jump into presentation, okay? This typically should be the shortest part of the sales cycle, but usually ends up being the longest, okay? This is the facts, features, benefits, services that you all bring, that your company brings, um, that makes you so awesome. And this naturally leads into every salesperson's favorite part of the um, sale cycle of the sale. Any guesses? What comes after the presentation? Close. The close. Yeah, Eddie knows. Of course, Eddie knows. Okay, the close. Okay, this is where we need to be closing for something. Okay, this is where we see a lot of people miss. Okay, you want to be closing for at least the next step. There needs to be some exchange of commitment on their part to do something. Okay. Most people, especially in real estate, we notice is we completely skip this step and we just hope and pray. Okay. So how many of you guys have a strong close after your presentation? Okay. Amanda kind of like half a hat, half a hand for Eddie and Eddie. Okay. So this sometimes is a really important part um, of the cycle is just knowing how to ask that question. Okay. Now, that brings us to the next step because after we close, sometimes we have to overcome objections, right? And most people don't actually close because they have one or two or three objections that they just hate, that are driving them crazy, that they knew if they could just get rid of those, then they would be the most confident closer ever, okay? But that's not really reality, right? So in coaching, what we actually do is we develop your confidence. We actually work with you to actually have a well-prepared rebuttal for whatever that objection may be. So when it comes up, you're really excited. And then you actually go back, and this is, again, the thing where most people miss, and you go back and ask another closing question, okay, to help them move this process forward, okay? Now, whether they decide to work with us or they don't, right, we ask everyone for the last part, which is the referral, 
right? This is where you're turning a name, or most critical part where you're grabbing a name and a number, okay? A prospect, turning them into a client, all of this. So you guys all do this, right? No matter what, you guys are all asking for referrals. Yep. Yes. You're asking for one? You only ask for one, not two, Raphael? Yeah, you have a question? Or you're raising hand? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So um, let me, okay. So let me pause here for a second with, with referrals. And this is where I'm going to ask for your guys' participation. What is your mindset around referrals? Okay. Is it everybody out there needs to talk to me? Is it, oh man, referrals, they come across so needy. Or like, what is your mindset? Tell me a little bit, like, where's the mindset when it comes to referrals? Where are we supposed to gather referrals? Let's start there. Silence is golden. Honestly, I think we're afraid to ask for referrals because we don't want to sound like needy or pushy in, in a way mm -hmm. to our yep. friends or family, right? Right. And how many of you guys only ask for referrals after you have a transaction? Right? That, that, that's a big one, right? It's like after they close, after I overcome their objection, and if I overcome the objection and it actually turns into a transaction, now I'm going to ask for referrals. Okay, so referrals is something that we should be gathering, especially in real estate from everybody we come across, okay? Referrals isn't just come from our, our clients. It can come from networking, it can come, come from door knocking. Um, I was actually talking to another uh, real estate agent and she was saying she doesn't get all of the uh, people from door knocking, but she gets a ton of referrals from the people that she talks to because it, it, that turns into an introduction into somebody else. Right. So it's always being out there. So if this is such an important part of our cycle of the sale, okay, I want you to slow down for a second and, and think through the last 10 people you've talked to that you sat down with, whether they worked with you or not, whether it's through door knocking, through networking, through whatever it is, however you met them, how many names and numbers did you get from them? How many did you walk away with? How many last, referrals have you guys gotten in the last week? Go ahead, Eddie. The last 10 people I spoke with, one. One, okay. Anyone have more than one? Okay. So maybe it's different for you guys. You can tell me. But is it easier to do a cold call or a cold door knock or to call a referral? <laughs> referral, of course. Referral, referrals, referrals, right? How much easier? 10, 20, 30%, 100%, 200%, right? The thing with referrals yeah, is that you don't know that much of people because you're like a brand new agent, especially because I'm a brand new agent. Um, you don't know, I don't know if in the SOIs mm. can give you a referral. Okay. Here's another question for you. How do you define a referral? Uh, one, of our, one of our clients, Jason O'Brien, we are kind of working on, on referrals for him. And he used to think that if he just did a good enough job with people that they would send him referrals. But he realized he didn't have any control over that, right? Just hoping people would send him referrals. That doesn't really help him drive his business. He doesn't have control over it. And so if you have goals, that's pretty disempowering, okay? And so he wanted to get out there and serve more people, but first he had to realize that hoping for referrals isn't helping him or his business grow, okay? And in today's environment, there are so many things, so many real estate agents out there that you have to learn how to separate yourself, okay? In the early 2000s, which I think most of you guys were here in the early 2000s, there are actually six listings for every agent on average. Eddie, you've been in the business for a while, right? Does that sound about right? Is it Freddie? Eddie or Freddie? I know your guys' names are so close. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Right? In the 2000s? Yeah. Yes. 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 yeah. Right. And, and right now, everybody knows like four to five real estate agents. And there's actually 20 plus agents per listing nowadays. That's part of the challenge, right? So you have to be the first one to actually ask for a referral. 
being top of mind isn't enough right now, okay? And one of the reasons I'm so excited to work with Berkshire is you guys are all supposed to be the best of the best. And for people like me out there who don't understand everything in the industry and everything in the market, if I don't work with the best of the best, I'm going to be losing out on something nine out of 10 times in a transaction. Do you guys realize that? Like yeah. you guys have the knowledge and, and the training and the wherewithal to help your referrals, prospects, clients, the people that you serve get the most out of this. And if you hold yourself back, whether it's this mindset piece, getting back to that, where you think, oh, my sphere doesn't know enough people. Okay. So here's my challenge to you is, are you asking for clients or are you asking for introductions? And what's the difference between those two? Okay, a client, this is the most common way people ask for referrals. Who do you know who's looking to buy or sell a house? Most common question in real estate, okay? That puts a lot of pressure on the person you're talking to, to know whether that person that they give you wants to buy or sell a house, okay? And in this environment, in this world right now, that's too late. They already have a real estate agent, okay? So, that's asking for a client. So asking for an introduction is just looking to be introduced to someone who may be looking to buy or sell a house. And you don't wanna put that pressure on the person who's giving you a referral or Rafa, we don't wanna put that pressure on our circle, on our sphere. We just wanna get introduced to people, okay? Because if you get introduced to someone who owns a home or who's renting and might be in the market, you may be the person that helps them see like, oh, I never realized that I had an opportunity for this, or I didn't realize the opportunity in this market if they wanted a list, right? That's how you get in front of it a little bit more. And this can be with your circle. This can be out networking, which probably a lot of us have stopped doing since, um, since COVID, okay? This could be um, with, our, with our clients in the, in the cycle, right? Whether they list with us, whether they buy with us or not. We're always asking for those referrals just for introductions to new people, okay? And that should allow you to blow up who you have to talk to a lot faster, okay? And the second part of, of referrals, kind of, Yesenia, kind of, I think it was that kind of referenced this, is once we gather that name and phone number, that's not enough, right? We got to get really good pre-approach here to make that initial connection. Okay, so if all we're doing is we're finding out why they're looking to buy or sell a house, are you separating yourself from all the other real estate agents out there? From the 25, 30 other people who could be contacting? You're not, right? So what are you doing to separate? What are you doing to create that connection with them off the bat to just get them talking and engage? Okay, do you know? Um, their family situation? Do you know their favorite sports team? Do you know if they care about USC or UCLA? You know, whatever their team may be. Are they a Rams fan or are they a Dodger fan? Whatever it is, just to have a little bit of fun with them and engage initially. And that's how you kind of wrap up the referral piece. And it doesn't matter where that comes from. Does that make sense? Any questions around, around that team? Yeah, it does. I've, I've only ever been asking for clients according to your uh, definition. So, I um, mean, you, when you're talking about asking these questions, you're asking the person that you've already been in contact with uh, for an introduction. Mm -hmm. So are you asking them um, that person about this particular other referral? Yeah. So let's say, let's say I was asking you, Freddie, like, hey, who do you know that? And then obviously there's a whole slew of different things I could ask with the that. Um, but I'm not going to say but looking to buy or sell a house. And we're going to throw that. Who do you know that? Um, I might start here. Who do you know that owns a house? Let, ah, let's okay. Say that. Okay. Because if I, if you, if you know someone who owns a house, is that a good prospect or an introduction for me to engage and see if I can go through, take them through my cycle, right? And get them to list. That's a possible person, right? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take all the pressure off of you, Eddie, to give me someone who wants to sell. And I'm going to say, who do you know that owns a house? Because that's someone who may be open to sell. And I'll take care of that, the rest of that. 
And then so you say, oh, my, give me, give me someone, Eddie. Give me a name. My brother. Your brother? What's your brother's name? Jesse. Jesse? Yes. Okay. So, so uh, what, what's one thing you really uh, respect about Jesse? Uh, he's a uh, sergeant for the LA County Sheriff's Department. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So, um, and why do you respect that about him? Um, you know, uh, he was a little bit of a troublemaker when he was younger. So seeing him kind of like, you know, go the straight and narrow and, and shape up was, was uh, you know, proud moment. Okay, perfect. So now I'm getting the pre-approach with Eddie about Jesse, right team? Now, when I call Jesse, I'm not going to say, hey, Jesse, this is David with Berkshire Hathaway. How are you today? Which is how most people will start off their call, right? And if you know anything about psychology, as soon as I say those words, they assume I'm in sales and what do they want to do? Close off or hang up. Hang up. <laughs> it's right away. Click, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's, that's what, what happens, right? So I'm going to engage with him a little bit differently. I'm actually customize this with each person in coaching, right? But I'm going to start off, hey, hey, Jesse, how's it going? My name's uh, David Higa. Um, I don't know if that name Eddie, uh, I'm probably going to butcher your last name. Uh, Ur Urutia? Yeah, it's pretty close. Go ahead. Okay. Urutia. There you go. Is that right? Okay. Uh, if that name um, rings a bell. And he's going, oh, yeah, of course. That's my brother. Oh, okay, yeah. He was actually telling me a lot of great things about you. Um, told me, I think you're a sergeant in the um, LA uh, County Sheriff's. But... You kind of used to be a little bit of a troublemaker back in the day. Is that about right? <laughs> okay. And just starting off there, have I built a little bit of a relationship with Jesse? Okay. Yes. Now it becomes my job as a salesperson to take him through the rest. Okay. And I haven't put any um, pressure on Eddie to give me a client. I just asked for the introduction to his brother, Jesse. Like Is that it. good? Yeah. Okay. Now this could be... A, your fear, this could be a networking event. It doesn't matter. The referral piece can come from anywhere, but definitely anybody we talk to in our cycle. If I go talk to Jesse and I'm going through the cycle with him and for whatever reason he pops out and he doesn't turn into a transaction, I'm going to ask Jesse for referral and introductions to, to new people who he may know. Okay. And I'll give you one more tip around this referral piece is the difference between who do you know that's looking to buy and sell a house or who do you know who owns a house or things like that is what kind of questions you're asking. Are you asking demographic questions or psychographic questions? Okay. And if you're used to hearing, I don't know, I can't think of anyone or can I get back to you? You're probably asking psychographic questions. Okay. Now what the hell does this psychographic question mean? It's asking the person to interpret or intuit what the other person may be thinking. Who do you know that's looking to buy or sell a house? You're asking for their intent of someone else. Okay. Who do you know that owns a home? Well, that's a category that people fall into. Or if you want to work with buyers, who do you know that's renting? Or who do you know that just had a kid and needs a little bit, may need a little bit more room? Right? Those are categories that people can easily identify within their mind. So if you're getting, I can't think of anyone or let me get back to you or anything like that, ask yourself, are you asking psychographic questions or demographic questions? Good? Okay. So um, one more step in, in this, or one of the things that we find in the cycle um, of the sale that actually helps with this idea of asking for introductions rather than clients is actually going into what we think is the most important part of this cycle of the sale is the introduction. Okay, so now we are getting back to this again, but have you guys ever been to like a bar or something, um, whether it's at a restaurant, you're just sitting there and you sit next to someone and they just start spilling their whole life story to you? And at the end, they're like, man, I feel like I know you so well, right? Has this ever happened to anyone or is this just me? Oh, man. Okay, so um, there's this connection that happens when people feel hurt, okay? And what's the number one thing people love to talk about? 
themselves, right? Right? Okay, so this is an area we see even when we're working with coaching clients. A lot of clients we start working with, 90% of them skip this, okay? Um, or they just don't do a good job, okay? And if you skip it or you don't do an effective job here, what we notice is you get a lot more objections and closing. And actually, it actually hurts our confidence going into asking for the referrals the right way, okay? So after we've introduced ourselves, developed a little bit of rapport to become a master at identifying the need and separating ourselves from other agents out there is, is really valuable and finding their motivation. Okay, so this is why someone's going to work with you, even through a challenging time, even through an up or down market, whatever it may be, even through a pandemic, pre or post, whatever it may be. Okay, so um, this is an acronym that we have, um, CLASP to kind of build momentum in this step, okay? So think of a, a listing, let's just, let's just do that for now. Would it be better to do listing or, or buyer? What do you guys like more? Listings. Listings, okay, okay. So, and let's think through Eddie's brother, Jesse. I, I don't know if he wants to sell his house, but all I know is he's a homeowner, okay? So after I've had my approach and now I'm gonna sit down with him, I got to really understand where he's at, okay? So this is just a momentum building step, okay? So the first thing I want to do is just ask Jesse, in this case, a few questions on where, where he's currently at. Now, the nice thing is if I'm dealing with a listing, he's at least worked with one realtor in the past, right, to buy the house he's in, okay? So um, I could ask, hey, have you ever, do you even know what's going on in the market? Where are you at with your house? You know, just getting to know him, any currently questions, um, here. Okay. Um, I could even ask, Hey, if we were to put your house in the market, what would you expect it to go through? Go for to understand maybe he has a realistic or maybe he has an unrealistic perception on what the market's like right now. Okay. If we were to put your house in the market, where would you move? Right. So these are just general questions just to understand, Hey, if we were to do this, what would it look like? Okay. Now, then we want to get into the like, Okay, so this is like, at least he's had um, interaction with at least one realtor. So, hey, what's one or two things that you've liked about other real estate agents or other realtors you've talked to in the past? What's one or two things they've done really well for you? Okay. If we can get a listing, usually right now, they have to go buy or rent something else. So you might ask another question. What do you really like about this house that the next house has to have? Right, that'll help us move that that needle as well okay alter okay this is the one where we're really building the momentum what are some of the things that other agents in the past have done that you really didn't like or what's one or two things other agents you've talked to or worked with in the past could have done better for you okay now most of us if we are any good at sales we like to get to this alter piece but we skip currently and like for a lot of different reasons okay but if we jump to this alter piece a lot of times that's where we come across as sales, okay? Then we slow down here. We actually teach you a technique in coaching to really feel the pain, right? This is where we separate the gaps between previous agents they've talked to or worked with and yourself, okay? We separate here and then we just ask the simple question, the signer question, this one's pretty obvious, like, hey, I don't wanna step on anyone's toes. Is there anyone else that we need to tie into this decision, right? So maybe Jesse's married and he's got to do that. Maybe he trusts uh, his brother, Eddie, and he wants Eddie to be on the decision. So this just make sure we have all the decision makers, okay? Because the worst thing we do in sales is we present all our opportunities, all our benefits, all our features, what's great about us. And then we hear, oh, I need to talk to so-and-so because we skipped this all important step of do I have all the decision makers? And if I don't, I stop and I go, okay, great. Let's get all the decision makers and then we'll go over everything, okay? And then P is paint the picture back. This is where it all comes back together, okay? And so we'll say, so Jesse, it sounds like you're really looking for uh, an agent that does like and like, a house that has X and Y, but you really would like an, an agent who doesn't do whatever he mentioned in alter, okay? If I could show you I could meet all the, those needs, is there any reason you wouldn't consider listing with me today? Okay, and at this point, how much selling have I done? Zero, right? 
All I've done is ask Jesse questions to understand where he's at and understand if this is going to be a possibility. Now, I could meet with Jesse and go through this and he go, well, X, Y, and Z, and maybe he's not really a good fit. Okay, that's fine. He's out of my cycle. I'm going to ask him for new introductions and then I'm on to the next person. Then that's going to happen sometimes. Okay. So, and at this point, we've effectively classed someone. We've pre-sold them on working with us if I can show how I can meet whatever they're looking for. Now, Eddie could, or Jesse could say, well, I really didn't like how they took 3%, right? Kept their commission there. Okay. How many of you guys like dropping your commissions? Nobody, right? Boo. I like it. Okay. So then if that's a real sticking point, right, for him, if I did a really good job here with Alter, I can usually move him off of that. If I did a really poor job here, then he's going to stick to his guns there because he doesn't understand the value that you guys are going to bring. Okay. Just like we talked about earlier, there's 20 plus agents per listing out there right now. And anyone in your position needs to know and understand and have the confidence, have the mindset, have the belief, the motivation that you bring so much value to someone. If you don't work with me, that 1% that you're talking about, you're going to lose way more than that in the transaction or the benefit, whatever it is, there's going to be a huge cost to you that greatly out, outweighs that 1%. And do you really believe that? Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. So um, in sales, everything is all about momentum and in coaching, it's all about perspective. So right now I just kind of wanted to um, do a fun little exercise around power of perspective. Okay. So this is the participation part team. Okay. So I'm gonna flip over to the next screen and I'm gonna have you read all of the Fs on the, on the screen. Okay. And then we're going to see how many you guys all see. Okay. F's like Frank. Sorry. F S F's like Frank. Okay. Ready, set, go. All right. How many did y'all see? Let's hear it. Me. Too fast. <laughs> Too fast. Okay. <laughs> Too fast. I don't know what number too fast is. Okay, I heard three, I think. Any other different numbers? Too many. <laughs> too many. Okay. Brenda, what'd you say? I had, I just, it was so fast. I only found three. Okay, three. Okay. Eddie? Yeah, I said three. Three. Amanda? You can do three, four, five. We have hands if you need to. Okay, so actually there's six. Wow. Okay. Most uh, people delete the uh, uh, Fs on of. We don't uh, see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and why is this so, por so important? Um, is sometimes we see things that are right in front of our eyes and we're missing things. Okay. And that's the power of having an outside perspective. And that's one of the things we, we do in coaching is just to be that outside pair of eyes that helps you see the stuff that might be right in front of you that you may not be seeing. Okay. And sometimes that thing is your own potential, okay? So have we all learned uh, a little something here today? Good, okay, have a little bit of fun with me? Okay, awesome. So at this point, would it be a pretty good idea to kind of just walk you through our coaching program and let you know how, if you wanna take it to that next level, we can serve you? Okay, so quick question, what do all these people have in common other than being wealthy and famous? <laughs> They all have coaches. Be coached. They all have coaches. Yeah. Managers, coaches, mentors. Mentors, coaches, and, they, and a lot of them coach as well, um, even though they have coaches. So one of our coaching clients, uh, Jason Dancher, I loved what he said. He said um, he was kind of like a middle-of-the-road producer, and he knew he could do so much more. And he said, if Tiger Woods has multiple coaches, I have no excuse. Okay. So by now, I'll walk you through this pretty quick team. Um, I always tell people this isn't rocket science. If it's something that I said uh, resonated with you today and you thought it was helpful, coaching is probably a good fit for you. And if it didn't, don't sweat it. Uh, so we know coaching isn't a good fit for everyone. If it's not for you, no worries. We still love you. 
um, all good. But if it is for you, obviously, we would love to help you grow. Okay. So um, what benefits can you expect to get from our coaching program? First one is make more money. Who doesn't want to make more money? Okay. Um, this one's kind of obvious. I would ask yourself if you had um, someone holding you accountable to implement just a few of the suggestions we went over today or put into practice or come up with like really dialed in languaging, do you think you would increase your income? Okay. And the nice thing is in your industry, just one transaction or two can be a huge jump in your, uh, in your income. Okay. Second is time. Probably one of the most valuable um, reasons people get into coaching is to help multiply your time. Okay. This is a really big one. Having so much on your plate, needing to juggle so many balls, life, whatever it may be, and helping you create better systems and structure and get more done in less time is so important, especially in today's environment for you guys, is you actually need to be talking to more people to get to your goal than you did two years ago, right? You need to get in front of more people to get there. Now, the nice thing is you actually need less transactions because the dollar amount is gone, okay? Third is grow your confidence, okay? Okay. This is all about breaking belief barriers. And a lot of times we work with people and they don't even realize they have limitations that they put on themselves of what they're capable of, okay? And it usually starts here, okay? So to really help uh, dig in and push you through that and help you realize you're capable of so much more than you thought you were, okay? So those are the three main reasons people typically get into coaching with us. Now, the way we actually set this up, it's all one-on-one. -on -one. There's actually a, a, a pairing process, a little behavioral assessment we do, kind of like match.com um, for your coach and you. Then it's one-on-one -on -one phone calls twice a month, 45 minutes, custom and tailored to your needs, okay? So um, Amanda may really want to work on how to uh, generate more referrals, where uh, Naomi is just, I need to work on my confidence. My motivation isn't where it needs to be, okay? Everyone's going to be in a different place, Okay and your coach will grow with you and customize that. We have a full curriculum of 25 uh, modules on a variety of different topics we'll customize to you. We have online learning uh, training videos, and then we have our uh, on, um, online activity tracking tool. Real estate, this is one of the most valuable things is we actually reverse engineer your goal. I think Amanda said she wanted to hit 30, right? So to hit 30, Throughout the year, you would want to be at about seven or eight right now, I think, if we broke it out into quarters. And then we go, okay, how do I get those seven or eight per quarter or two or three per month? And what activities do I need to be doing daily, weekly to actually get there? Because the hardest part in real estate, which is a longer sales cycle, is the worst day tomorrow is where we all say we'll get everything done. We got to get it done today. Okay. So um, uh, a lot of people ask, how do I know if our program is for you? Okay. Um, there's three things we're looking for with anyone who we uh, accept into our coaching program. The first one is, can you be coachable? Okay. Can you really be coachable? And coachable is more than just listening. It's actually um, open-minded to take advice from people who know what they're doing and who are out there doing those things, being successful, um, and actually implementing them, trying them out, uh, trying them out with excitement. Not like, oh, that won't work. I tried that once before. Are you really open to being coachable? Okay. Second, can you be committed? Um, not for life or in blood, okay? But we do look for a minimum of a 12-month commitment uh, from people. After that, it just goes month to month. And third, are you ready to make some changes? Okay, this is a big one for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people want change, but not everybody wants to change, right? We all know the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, right? So are you satisfied with your daily motivation level, with your time management, with your organization, with your sales skills? Or do you know you're capable of so much more? Are you ready to change? Or are you perfectly happy with where you are with your business and where your income level is today, okay? Do you know that you're capable of so much more in your personal and professional life, your financial life? Are you ready and willing to make that change to start maximizing? So if you're honestly able to say yes to all three of these, and we know you'd be a great fit in our program, if you said no or are hesitant on any of these, then we know you probably wouldn't be a good fit. But team, my challenge for you, because I know you have two great um, leaders and trainers and Eddie and Freddie, is if you say no to any one of these three, is to really dig in and say why. Because without these, that might be the one thing that's holding you back from where you want to be. Okay.
So a lot of people ask us at this point, like, how much is this going to be and everything like that. So just to kind of give you some examples. These are some other coaching programs that people have been in. Um, or if you want to coach with Tony Robbins, he charges the low, low price of a million dollars a year. Okay. Um, so most people expect with everything included, it's one-on-one, -on -one, all of that. It'll be at least 2000 a month because we want to get out there and help people. Our top producers edge program is just 650 a month, which with a one-time activation fee, or if, if you're on that upper level, um, 200 and above, um, we have an elite level program, customized, bigger, um, kind of mindset that 30,000 foot view. And that's just a one-time activation fee again, 12 months, month to month after that. Okay, so the next question people ask is, what if I don't have the money or it's just bad timing? And if I could just be honest for a second, if you don't have the money, you need to do it because we're going to help you make more money. If you don't have the time, you need to do it because we're going to help you get back to time. Okay, and if you're going to be honest for a second, we never just have extra money lying around and we don't just all have this extra time. Okay, so what you're really wondering is if it'll work for me. And what I would say is, are you willing to work for it? Because like I said earlier, average client has an increase in their income of 25.1%. And if you do at least these three things and being in Southern California, you should do way better than average, but we'll just say, do at least average, you get a, um, a huge re uh, return on investment here, okay? The last thing people say is I need to talk to my spouse, okay? I don't wanna cause any divorces or anything like that, but after doing, thousands of these workshops, if I could just be honest with you guys for a second, your spouse is never the reason people don't get into coaching. They're the excuse. Okay. Because spouses will ask this question, are you going to use it or not? That's all they want to know. Because if you're going to use it, you're going to be home more, you're going to make more money, you're going to be more present, then it's a worthwhile investment. But if you're not going to use it, then don't waste the money. Okay. So again, this comes down to you. Okay. So at this point, how many of you guys are at least open-minded to the idea of having a coach? A couple of people? Okay. So um, I feel confident in saying that uh, Freddie wouldn't have invited me in today unless he thought this could help you increase your production. And I know Freddie and I are definitely on the same uh, page and we want to help you take your business to that next level. Um, so at this point, I just want to invite Freddie back up and have him share a few words. And I just have to tell you all how lucky you are um, it's been a real treat getting to know Freddie over the past, I think about a month and a half when we first started talking um, and getting a chance to work together is I know he truly cares about your success. Um, and that's why he had me in is he believes in you and all of you. Um, and he really wants to help you be su successful. Okay. So I just want to have him come back and share his open and honest uh, feedback. Um, a little bit about coaching. Thank you, David. I appreciate you know, for your great presentation. Thank you very much, man. So, yeah, you know, we all learn from this, um, from this great actually um, subject. You know, sometimes, you know, coaching is the key for our business to grow. Um, definitely, you know, I have my own coach when it comes to management and for admin. You know, I got to keep up with everything. Again, time management, you know, how to run the office, leadership and everything else. So, and it helps me enhance my skills, my knowledge, my mindset, you know, how to get motivated in this business. So I definitely encourage all of you guys to please, you know, take the opportunity right now because, uh, you know, if you don't want to, if you definitely want to grow into your business and have someone hold you accountable for it, again, this is it. Um, there's no excuses. Again, just to say, you know, are you a team player? Are you a part of the game? Right. Or you just just stay back and relax and let, and then allow out someone else to take your business from you. You know, there's a lot, a lot of business for all of us in this business, you know, Right now, this very instant right now, somebody is there taking the listing, making an offer, opening an escrow, and it's about to close escrow. Now, are you part of the crowd or just waiting for the business to come to you? Keep in mind that in this business, in our business, you know, we gotta go out there, we gotta go to the business for ourselves. It's, it's gonna fall, it's not gonna fall on our laps that easily. And if it does, yeah, maybe once or twice, or maybe three times in a lifetime. You know, with partly from your parents siblings and maybe some friends but again that number is very minimum to the number you could get more from the strangers outside again it's about 10 percent that people you know and the 90 percent you, you don't know you don't know at all right so 
again, for us to help you, again, with David's help from Eddie, from Amanda, right, is to help us, again, to help you increase your confidence. So I want to ask you guys right now, what is your biggest takeaway from this training, from this uh, coaching? You know, if you guys can actually open your mic, please share, share some ideas with us, with David, with, with me, and then with Eddie. You know, how can we continue helping you? Because at the end of the day, if you guys succeed, we all succeed. We, I want to see you succeed, folks. Again, you know, I've been this with this 20 years plus in this business, and I have seen people come and go, come and go. You know, it's a roller coaster. Yeah. You know, it, you know, back in the 90s and the late 90s, yeah, rates were high, 7%, 8%, 10%. And then, they, you know, the market went crazy back in 03, 04, 05, and then it crashed in 08. And then again, we had short sales for closures in 09, 10. The rates dropped. And then gradually prices have gone up. Now people are making excuses now. Well, rates are going up. There's a lot, there's no inventory. There's a lot of buyers, but I, I can't make it my, my first accepted. But okay, forget what people are doing. See, what is what are you doing right now? It's gonna help you improve your business this instant, right now. So please open your mic. I wanna please wanna hear from you guys. Not just for myself or from Dave, from Eddie, from Amanda. Please let us know what is your biggest takeaways and what is your excuse not to get involved. Again, if it's not with David, any other coaching. Again, there's Mike Ferris, there's Tom Ferris, there's Brian Buffini. Again, where do you want to take? But again, do it. Take action, folks. You know, take action. You know, again, David, he's here to help us because he's, again, he's part of Berkshire brand. He's a partnership with us. Now, if you feel that, you know what, I just don't like David, I don't like his presentation, if it's funny, hey, okay, I respect that. Again, we're not saying to like him, just take his advice, his coaching, that's it. <laughs> End of the day, that's how it is, man. So, so anybody else want to share with us what you speak, what is your biggest take, at least one or two takeaways from this training? Anybody? Come on. I'll start it off. Uh, I, I like the his cycle of the sale, you know, breaking it down step by step almost. And for somebody who um, takes direction like that, you know, uh, especially like uh, playing sports, everything's broken down by like a, a step, like a golf swing. You know, you, the way you take it back, your follow through, everything. So this is kind of similar to that, where if you follow the steps, it becomes a smooth swing, you know? True. Yeah. Again. It's about discipline. Again, it's having multiple steps, right? From one to 10, whatever, one, two, three, three, right? It goes on. Again, you cannot jump from one to 10. Like you cannot go to one, four, and then come back to two. You got to follow every single step the way it is. So just have it by having a, his, his cycle right there. So again, his introduction, his approach, right? And everything else the way it is, you got to put it into practice. Anybody else? Brenda? Really? Yeah, I have um, one, um, actually a couple of things because <clears throat> when I'm talking to um, my hair clients, that's who I consider my spirit influence. Um, I am not asking, I'm, I'm asking more of the psychographic questions. So I like um, the part about asking the demographic questions, like um, people in, you know, asking about the categories versus um, what they're doing or, you know, I can't word it the way he worded it, but <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> so, um, and then I also like the um, class, the momentum building. I like that too. Now, keep in mind that, you know, all of us know a real estate agent, first close person. Again, all of us do. You know, I um, think there's about, per person's about five people, they, they have an agent already. Again, there's five people, there's five agents, Per person out there, I believe so. So, trust me, if you have a friend or a family member, they probably know at least five agents in their life. Say yourself. Again, so that's a base competition. Again, in my in my family, again, I, first I have Eddie, my cousin as well. My brother's in real estate, so the competition is is even bigger for us. So when it comes to selling real estate, again, they gotta either go to my brother, to Eddie, or to myself if they want to buy or sell. So think about that. It's three of us for, the, for our family. So imagine, not, it's just three of us. Now imagine the, the rest of the crowd, the rest of the people out there who are licensed, who are selling real estate. So 
And that's why we gotta, again, get out of our comfort zone, right? Build our mindset, have the skills, the knowledge to prepare us to take our business to the next level. So anybody else, come on, Yesenia. Okay, Rafa. You meet Rafa. Well, I've um, I've learned something from from a friend that he told me. I'm gonna say it in Spanish. Que el jodido a todas va. Okay. So say it in English, <laughs> please. That the screwed one goes to everything. All right, let go. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else want to share anything else? Okay, Amanda. Yeah. Okay. 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 Feedback? okay. okay, so um I just wanted to tell you guys like I've been I've had several different types of coaching in the last 18 years in my business. And everything that David's kind of gone through here, I don't see anything in here that can't make you guys money. And he mentioned something about like, if it's you just being afraid that I don't have the money for it, if you just sign up for coaching, and again, like Freddie said, if it's not through David, through somebody else, if you sign up and you do it, you will make that money because if you know I don't have 650 for the next month, you're going to work your butt off to get those transactions, to get those clients, to be able to pay for the next month of coaching. The accountability, the accountability in any coaching is phenomenal. So I just... Like Freddie, you know, we just want you guys to sign up for something that you know is going to work for you. Pay it. You'll make the money tenfold. Don't be afraid. Just go for it. I've been there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Again, that is key, folks. Again, that is key. Again, coaching. Again, it's just like, like David said, again, if top athletes, professionals, leaders, again, have their own coach, their own mentors, Right why can we not have somebody to hold us, to show us, to hold us accountable, to push us, to take our business to the next level? Again, what's on you guys back? And like, like you know, th there's money, you know, you guys have money laying around again. If, if Again, if you have to stop going to Starbucks for coffee, <laughs> right? Having some beans and rice, maybe for a month, whatever it takes. But next time you have steak and lobster. How's that, right? So, Again, everything's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that we all we all gotta take. And maybe one one month, you know, we gotta adjust the, the belt and you know eat light and maybe some again. But next time, hey, it's gonna pay off again. And you know, one of my coaches back in my days told me, look, Freddie, you know, how do you feel when your kids come to you and they ask you for something and you gotta say no? Because wait, because you have no money, that, doesn't that break your heart? And of course, yes, it does. Well, well, every time you say no to your kids, it's because you're, it's your fault. He made me really think about that. Why? Well, why is that? Well, because again, because you're not doing, you're not doing whatever it takes to say a yes. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying to everything, but again, according to your, to their needs. Now, if, if we can help you increase your production again, from one to ten to twenty to thirty deals a year. Imagine how would that change your impact. Imagine how would that impact your life, your family, your well-being, your livelihood. Again, if it, if if again, just one deal makes a big impact. Again, I'm talking about ten thousand dollars in one transaction, based on a commission in our, in, our, in our marketplace. Now imagine twenty. That's hundred thousand like a year, folks. And it's simple. Again, it's very simple. That's one and a half a month. It's very simple, just like that. It's not, again, it's not rocket science. And again, you know, just get in, in between either. Have your seller, the buyer, get in between. That's it. That's him. Become the ham. So, David, <laughs> take it away, David. Perfect. Um, did you talk to Dennis? Ready? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead. Did you talk to Dennis? Did he put together anything for the team? Um, you know what? Um, he he's gonna get back to me today. <laughs> but yes. Uh, so um, if you wanna just just relate back to him, I think you to Leland, right? Um, the way it was with them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it, it should be the same, pretty much the same thing. Um, David. Um, yeah. 
So the cool thing with uh, Dennis and Freddie and some of the other managers is um, they believe in you so much that they actually want to kind of incentivize it. Um, I think it was 150 a month for uh, a tr closed transaction. So if you think about investing in yourself um, and have a leadership team behind you who believes in you so much that they're going to be willing to give you an incentive um, to get back some of the uh, money um, is, is not common, especially in real estate. Most of them are just like, no, no, I just want them to figure it out. On their own. Okay. So that's an extra incentive that uh, Dennis has done for some of the other offices. I'm sure you do the same for you guys. So they will reimburse you 150 on your transactions. Okay. So keep it in mind. If you sign up with, um, with David today. Yeah. So, okay. So real quick, let me just kind of run through this. Um, we do have a, a kind of take action now um, fast action scholarship um, of extra goodies. We want to make sure this is an absolute no brainer. So what we'll do is we'll send you a $200 value of our video training series. So if you need more stuff to work on your business, um, this is around taking ownership. Okay. We could all use a little bit more ownership today. If you're struggling with picking up the phone and how to do it, how to have fun mindset, skill set, whatever it is, we have a, a hundred dollar series. We'll send you 42 different tips around just picking up the phone and being a master on engaging new clients. Um, we have a home study library we'll send you. And then we also, you also have access to our once a month mastermind um, valued at about $100 a month or $1,200 for the year. Um, so all of that's included. Actually, it's about $650. I got to change that um, in there. So by now, all of you guys should be in one of three categories. Um, whichever category in is totally fine. Just be honest with yourself. Um, a one is, hey, I, I know I need coaching. I know I want coaching. I need, it's time for me to go to that next level. Let's do it. I'm ready. A two is I know I need a coach. I know I want a coach, but I have like a logistical question. Like um, I have a one month vacation coming up or my wife's pregnant or, you know, something like that. And, you know, you've got some logistical question or a three is, hey, thanks for the information. Coaching isn't for me for whatever re reason. Uh, so just be honest with yourself. It's okay. Just pick a category. And if you could do me a favor and just text me which number you're in. One, I'm in. Two, I'm in, but I have a question. Or three, um, thanks for the info, but coaching isn't for me. So just go ahead and text me your number real quick. Um, and for those of you who can't see the number, if you're on your phone, it's 310-780-3700. Five, nine, and just go ahead and text me one I'm in, two I'm in, but I have a question, and, or three, coaching isn't for me, but thanks for the information. Um, if you're a three, what was your top takeaway or two from today? If you're a two, um, what are the top two things you're looking to get um, out of coaching right now? And if you're a one, what are your goals for 2022 and coaching? And then I will um, grab some time with all the ones and twos afterwards. So go ahead and text me real quick. And I'll keep an eye. So, so Raphael, can you hear me, Raphael? What, um, what would you be looking to get help with out of coaching? What would be like the top one or two things you're looking for? If you can share with us. I think you're muted or fine. It's because I have uh, my cell phone, my computer's not working. Yeah. Um, the, the audio of my computer's not working. Well, I have uh, two questions. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll answer your questions. Um, we'll do that one-on-one, -on -one, but what are you looking to get out of coaching right now? Right now, what can I like, you know, I'm going to like, you know, go escalating to, to get, um, to get like, you know, more clients, get more referrals and to hit my first and, and, and the most important, get my first client. Gotcha. 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 Okay, cool. Can you talk at like 12 o'clock and we can kind of go over any sure. questions you have? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see who else is here. I'm gonna bug everybody. What about you, Naomi, Brenda, Carlos, Ava, Christy? I'm guessing that's Fernando, Yesenia, Karina, Henry, 
Mike, go ahead and text me just one, two, or three, just so I can know where everyone's at or else I got to call everybody. Okay. Brenda, can you talk at 12.30 after Raphael? You're muted. I have to get ready to go to my other job. I have to be there at one. Um, so can it be, let's see, are we about to type, finish up right now? Yeah. So I can prepare for that. Um, okay, so you said, what, you said what time, 12.30? Can we do 12.45? Sure. Or you know what, I'm sorry, 12.30, 12.30 is fine. Naomi, thank you, Jamie, Carlos, Ava, everybody else? One, two, three? Nobody? I can't tell because I can't see anybody's faces on the rest. So, um, all right, well, I'll let you guys keep doing that. And um, for any of you guys who like winning, if anyone, if that's anyone here, um, if you got any value from today, um, I'd love for you to share this with other people. Um, so any referrals um, you give will be great. Um, and so basically I'm looking for anyone in sales, ideally the Freddies and the Eddies of the world, the leaders, um, but really anyone in sales. So it could be your title person, it could be your uh, mortgage person, could be your insurance person, could be your the car dealership, the G, uh, general manager there, uh, who you think would get some value. And if they decide to take advantage, great. If they don't, that's totally okay too. So it's no pressure. Um, so if you give at least two people, um, for whoever does that, I'll, um, you guys are going to get the ownership series, um, the $200 value as a free gift um, today for anyone who has at least two. Um, and if you have those, just send me their uh, information, just text it to me at that number. Um, and then I'll ask you for your email so I can get you enrolled in the um, in the uh, in the free giveaway. Sound good? Okay, any other questions or anything, especially from the people who we can't see? Thank you for the people who had their cameras on, by the way. We love seeing faces. Of course. Good. Good, awesome. Ready? Awesome. Yes, we are, David. Well, um, anybody else, any, any other comments, questions before we in our training today, our meeting. We're good. David, well, it was a pleasure, brother, having you on, on our Tuesday training. And hopefully it's not the first or the last. You know, um, but again, I, you know, our biggest takeaway, again, guys, please, you know, invest in your time, invest in yourself. You know, I, I think um, time is your, your worst enemy if you don't take action. Um, you know, definitely, you know, this business, is for you to take again. You're already in it, so go ahead and work for it. You know, work for your business. You know, if you, unless you were driving to the business like I was, but again, at the end, I love it, I enjoy it. Uh, but if you are decide to get into real estate because of the money to help people to better living, again, this is it. So, buy it, use it to your advantage. You know, um, take action. Honestly, take action. You know, take action. action. Yeah, take, that's key. Take action and, you know, and let a coach help you take you from point A to point Z. That's it. So, with all that being said, thank you very much, David. It's a pleasure having you again. To all of you guys in this call, take care, be safe. Soft get off is tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Um, next, next Wednesday for Downey. And again, thank you guys. Have a nice day. Be productive. God bless you guys. Be safe. Thanks, Adios. Everyone. Adiós.